What's going on guys, Snaggy here and it's time to review round 27 and the season. It's over. It's over guys. The regular season for 2024 is wrapped. A bunch of teams about to go on their Mad Monday and a bunch of teams getting ready for some finals. And it's going to be a cracker of a final series. We'll get to that in a minute. But I absolutely cannot wait. This is going to be a crazy final series. I can see something going down. I really can. We'll look at the matchup shortly, guys. Uh, before you do, let me know how you went over the weekend, guys. One through eight. I don't know what we went on the tips. Went five from eight on our punt. On the punt, guys. So not too bad. A little bit of profit there. Not too bad at all. Um, make sure you are following me on Dabble and on here as well, on, on YouTube as well. I usually do really well in the finals. Finals are pretty easy to predict. Um, so yeah, make sure you shoot us a follow on Dabble there. It's Monster Snag, guys. Or if you want to join, there's a link in the in the uh, description there. Um, and just, I just wanted to ask you guys as well. Um, so obviously, my previews for finals. Would you rather each game as its own video or one big video like I normally do with all eight games, or all four games, two games, however many have been played over the weekend? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that one as well, guys. I'm happy to do whatever you guys think. All right, let's get to results quickly. And again, in this video, I'll just be more talking about the relevant teams. Not going to be going into too much depth with the Tigers versus the Eels and stuff like that, all right? So Broncos get absolutely obliterated 50-12 to 12 against Melbourne Storm. West Tigers, unfortunately, get their third wooden spoon in a row. Getting, getting pumped by the Eels 60-26. to 26. Roosters defeat the Rabbitohs 36-28. to 28. Raiders up the milk. 26-24 against the uh, Dragons. Bulldogs get absolutely humped by the Cowboys. And Panthers scrape home against the Knights, uh, the Titans. Sharkies, what a performance against the Seagulls, 40-20. to And then the Newcastle Knights, what a performance against the Dolphins. I was really, really impressed there, guys. Now let's have a look at the ladder, which will also tell us who's playing next weekend. Now, actually, let's just check if round 27 is updated. It's not yet, but we can work out. We just don't, won't know. I don't know who's playing on what day. Let's just refresh this just in case I have updated it. Nope. And let's have a try here as well. Nope. Maybe it will tell us if we do this. Okay, so we got autofill. So that's who's playing, guys, obviously. So we've got... We have the Storm playing the Sharks, we have the Cowboys playing the Raiders, we have the Bulldogs playing the Seagulls, and we have the Penrith Panthers hosting the the Roosters. Now, I wonder if, I'm not too sure if this is right, guys, but I wonder if this is the, how the days will be. So, for example, see here we, here we have Friday. Is that going to be this game, and then this game, then this game, then this game? That That's interesting. I wonder if it will if it goes, if that's how it sort of works. I'm not too sure, can't really remember if that's how it works, but that they're the games we have, guys. I'd love your early predictions with these two, who you got in the Storm, Sharks, Cowboys, Raiders, Bulldogs, Seagulls, Panthers, Roosters. It's going to be massive. I cannot wait. There's a lot of games here that I think in particular the teams, the these bottom four, Super even. Normally, 5th or 6th are pretty damn good, and 7th and 8th are just making up the numbers. Obviously, the Knights come up here, but I don't think so in this case. I don't think so. I think I think the Knights could get the Cowboys. I think, the sea, um, obviously, the Bulldogs could beat the Seagulls, and Seagulls could beat the Bulldogs quite handily. Um, so, we don't know. We don't know, guys. It's going to be absolutely bananas, man. Bring it on. All right, let's go through the Melbourne Storm versus the Broncos. I mean, this was just an absolute clinic. I had quite a few of the bros uh, message me saying thanks for the payday on that one. Uh, I didn't take it. I wish I listened to my own advice, bros. I said uh, Broncos left edge, flimsy, so take guys on Melbourne's right. And I, said, I actually said Katoa and uh, Hughes if you want value. A bunch of people put those two together. It paid out real nice. Uh, so shout out to you, uh, good on you. Uh, I mean, that Broncos left edge was just... Will Warbrick was just in flight. I felt every two seconds I was watching him make a line break. He is he absolutely killed it. Got himself a hat trick there. Then Jerome Hughes on the right, Katara on the right. Jerome Hughes on the right. It was just... It was just a Jerome Hughes again. It was just, yeah, absolutely clinical. Ten line breaks in the first half. 
I reckon Broncos conceded about 10 line breaks every four or five games last year. That, that's insane. Uh, it, it could have been 40 nil at halftime. It really could have. Jerome Hughes, Daly M pick for me. He's been absolutely enormous all year. Super consistent. Melbourne Storm look like the best team for me. And to me, they're the team to beat. I know you probably like, of course they are. They've won the most games this year, blah, blah, blah. But I think a lot of people still have Penrith as favourites. It's because they've been there, done that the last three years. Just just comparing them to Br- the Penrith Panthers. Penrith just look beatable. I'm not saying they are beatable. I mean, they just look more beatable than the Melbourne Storm to me. Uh, every single deficiency that I said they had last year, like I was like, little small in the middle, couldn't couldn't play, you know, they couldn't hang with teams in the middle for, for 80 minutes. I mean, there was a game last year where they played the Penrith Panthers in the, right in the smack bang middle of the year. Melbourne Storm came out strong for 14-0 or something like that. Looking great, looking great, looking great. Penrith just held their nerve. I think they got a try before, just before half time. It's 14 6 or something. And then just held their nerve. And then about the 55th, 60th minute mark just went bang, bang. They ended up winning like 36 to 14. It was it ended up being an absolute hiding. They couldn't go with teams long term. I felt like they were a little bit flimsy on the edges. Completely fixed that with guys like, um, with guys like uh, Holt. Um, Hayworth and Anderson and stuff like that. They're just, they've been incredible, man. They've been absolutely incredible. And how good is this guy to watch? I was funny, I was watching this game with, uh, uh, with a, I'll just say a friend, a friend of mine who uh, he watches footy, loves footy, but only watches his team play, which is the Raiders, and uh, doesn't watch like, doesn't really watch a ton of games, like not Saturday games, it's just big Friday night games and stuff like that. And he'd never seen Far Longo before and he could not believe his eyes. He's like, that dude is crazy. I'm like, yeah, bro, he's nuts. But yeah, look, man, Melbourne team to beat for me. They're going to be hard to stop. I think they probably walk through the first two two rounds of the finals um, and then grand final, one game away. So... Yeah, it's 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 gonna be gonna be absolutely crazy. Let's move on to the spoon bowl, guys. Uh, look, it was pretty damn good, man. They were we hit our punt on this one too. We hit our punt on the first game too. We were three from three to start the weekend. I was like, oh yeah, we're on. Ended up five for eight for the weekend, so pretty good. But like, I was when you get you go three from three, you want six. You want six. Uh, look. I had a, I saw, I wish I had it, uh, I wish I saved it, but I saw a video of, sorry, a picture of what Tigers team will look like next year, substantially better, but this game to me sort of showed how far off the pace they were, substantially better from last year, you know, like if they were a 2 out of 10 last year, they were a 4 out of 10 this year, I thought they were okay, I thought they were pretty good, they won more games than last year, all that sort of stuff, but like, big big game in the context of where these two teams sat and they, they did try their ass off and they did take it real seriously and then the eel eels missing 40 percent of their salary cap put it on them they're, they're still pretty far off the pace like to me they look like they look improved and they jagged a few extra games to teams that maybe didn't take them too seriously or whatever but they're still pretty far off the pace but they've got some good inclusions Lua, royce hunt stuff like that for next year some of those young guns with a bit more far, um, experience they could improve but i heard people saying top eight next year i doubt it now um eels possibly riles a lot of guys on notice with contracts all that sort of stuff i i think he could pump some life into them uh, I really do, but yeah, they've obviously got a lot of work to do too and need to stay healthy uh, if there's any hope for the finals next year. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's just Moses Moses and Lomax, I think, are going to combine for a lot of tries. Um, and just hopefully Rilesy brings that... Because the Eels have been great for 60 minutes. Like, it's, so the, When I did my preview on this game, I said... West Tigers can be great in patches. Like they'll just give you a couple random patches throughout the game where they're brilliant and then they're bad. Eels have been good for the majority of the game. They just haven't really been able to seal games and lock them out and stuff like that. So knock teams out. Uh, so you know if he can bring just that Melbourne Storm play for eighty, they'll they'll win more games than they lose and they'll probably scrape into the eight. But not calling it yet. Need to see how the team shakes out. And uh, they've got a lot of work to do. Roosters versus the Rabbitohs. Now, I was really interested in this game just because I thought, I really thought, it was funny, I, I won my punt in this game too, but I, the game was complete. I thought the Bunnies were going to, I thought the Roosters were going to blow them off the park and then the Bunnies would get back into it in the second half. It was sort of the other way around. Uh, 
Bunnies were really good in the first half and Roosters were really good in the second. I know it ended a couple late tries, sort of made the scoreline skew a little bit. But, um, look, I wasn't overly impressed with the Roosters. They did... I'll give them a benefit of the doubt that, you know, obviously a lot of new combinations, things didn't click and they were a bit clunky. But, yeah, they're going to have to be better against Penrith. They really are. They get a lot back, but still, I just... They've got to be a lot better. I mean, this is a pretty ass Rabbitohs team, and they weren't great. They weren't great. Um, pretty good in patches. This patch here was pretty damn awesome. You know, they scored a try right before sort of half time, and then they sort of scored three in the next 15 minutes, uh, just over half time. So, pretty nice little patch there on either side of the half, but yeah, they've got to be better. They really do. Um, uh, yeah, really interesting. Who do they have back next week? Let's have a quick look at the casualty ward. But just early predictions, I would say Penrith get them. I mean, look at this. Penrith only have Nathan Cleary to come back. Then they're full strength. Uh, where? Who am I looking for again? Roosters. There they are. So Victor Radley back to be confirmed. Apparently he is back next week, but we'll have to see. Uh, Baker's gone for the season. Season, season. So not only really Victor coming back, right? Oh, and Dom Young. Dom Young's not on here. Dom Young should be there too. Who else? Let me know in the comments as well who else um, should be coming back. Yeah, there's Tommy Travoyevich as well. And they need, I think they need Saab back too, but we'll get to that. But yeah, Rooster's good without blowing me away. Uh, but yeah, they've got to, definitely got to be better if they want to. To me, they look like... This, this is what they look like to me right now. And they look like they'll probably lose to Penrith. Go down, beat whoever makes it through. I don't know who, whatever cows, bulldog, whatever, probably beat them, then they go back up and get beaten again, they don't that, that's what they look like to me, that's where they're at but they can lift, like I said sometimes these injuries can bring, bring teams together when you lose a key player and uh, we'll have to see how we go Dragons versus the Milk what a win for the Milk when this game started look at that they didn't score a try for the next for the final 60 minutes of the game when this game started, we had under 32 points in the first half, and I was sitting there going, there was the first try, I was like, to the boys in the dabble chat, no, nah, we're good. Second try, ugh. still good. Like, you know, like, it, it sucks, boys, but, you know, this a couple fluky tries, it's all good. And then the third one happened, I was like, God damn. All right, this can still hit, but we can't have any tries in the next few minutes. Then Danny Levi crashed it. I'm like, oh, come on, four tries in 14 minutes? <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, absolutely nuts. And it was crazy. Like, a couple of the tries were a bit dicey too, and it still nearly hit. Like, that's why people were like, that was a dumb punt. I'm like, not really. I mean, there was a, literally a try fest, and it only missed by two points. <laughs> we're one conversion off. Uh, well, two, because it has to be under 32. <sighs> Look, Dragons to me, I just just a brief summary of that. It was just I just still I just don't understand. If you watch my post game video lives, I just don't understand the way they're playing. Like they're tough, they're gritty, they've got spark, all that sort of stuff. I just don't understand their game plan sometimes. And just like I said, like a final thing, people are like, oh, why'd Zach Lamex leave the Dragons? I don't think he left the Dragons. I think he left Ben Hunt. I don't think he liked playing with him. The amount of times you just see him throw his arms up in the air after. After Ben Hunt just puts in this trash kick. Like, the amount of kicks he put in, like... Like, the, you'd be kicking 40 metres out. And he put it, like, almost like inside the tram lines. Like, probably just outside the post. So, Zach Lomax has to travel so far to try and get to it. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? Like, I honestly think if you kicked Lomax 10 times... Like, if you give Lomax 10 attempts to catch, snatch the ball and go over the line... I think, I think he's getting... Two, three, four... You know, like he kept kicking back through the middle. I just didn't understand it. I thought, I thought, I thought Ben Hunt. He he's got a lot of tries this this year. I personally give him a D plus on the season. I know that's crazy saying, but I have just not liked the way they've played footy. I re I just really don't. Uh, I just don't like the way they played. Like so, offensively and kicking and just just basic game. Sorry, I actually like the way they've played. They played really good. I just didn't like the way that Ben Hunt orchestrated their sets. And I didn't like the way he'd get them to the wrong spot in the field before. That, like, I don't know. But look, that's stuff you can fix. Um, I think Flanagan's done a really good job. They definitely get a pass mark for the year for me. 
and uh, they've got a they've obviously got Val Holmes coming, so cool, good. I think they can improve, but just still a bit of work to do in that in that uh, department because. Yeah, and just just the consistency department as well. They they have to be better there. But yeah, shout out to them and shout the milk as well. If they can stay healthy next year, I think they can get into the eight. I really do. Probably need they need a bit of luck with the draw. They need a bit of luck with injuries, but I think they could be good enough. I really do. So shout out to the milk. Not too far off for finals. Uh, I, I loved a lot of what's going on there. I think Strange will be even better next year. And uh, they start off in Vegas as well, so don't bend her over there too hard, boys. <laughs> Cows versus the Doggies. What a game. Uh, so just, just this, we'll have to talk about this game a little longer just because that both these teams are playing finals. Someone said this to me. So Bulldogs last year had the worst defence in the history of the game. And they expect, so in the second half of the year anyway. And it's all sort of started when Parramatta... Like identified well, they who knows who knows Reed Marnie better than anyone. It's uh, it's the Parramatta Eels, and all they did was send traffic at him all game. And I hear people say all the time, "Man, he's so courageous. He makes sixty tackles in a game." It's, yeah, I, I, he is, and that is great. But you don't want him making sixty tackles a game. This and the Cowboys just dead set picked up what Manly did the week before. Sent traffic at him all the game. Now, this is what happens if you send traffic at Reed Marnie a game and you make you make him make sixty tackles. Number one, he's going to miss at least five. So he's, you're going to make him you make you're going to make him miss five tackles minimum. You're going to get at least ten quick play the balls because he's hanging on for dear life because he's a smaller body, which which obviously sets up your next run. It also Every single time he has to make 50, 60, sometimes nearly 70 tackles in a game, he makes errors. He made, I think, I think he made three errors in this game, but uh, one of them he didn't get picked up by the by the um, what's it called the referee. But you know he made plenty of errors in this game, and there's and not only that, his service gets poor when you're. Um, you know, when when you're just tired, like his his passes aren't as crisp out in front as they usually are. When he's you know had to make a million tackles, he's getting guys like you know Paseca. In this game, he had Tamalolo and Maliki, and like all these guys is pumping through him. It just it just became so easy. Yeah, um, and if you get a quick play of the ball, then the next the next tackle's good. Then the next, and it's just a flow on effect. Also, not having Bird in there to bail them out a lot as well was a big uh, thing. So they've got to sort that out. I heard a lot. I saw a lot of people in the Discord chat of ours. Sort of saying, oh, Manly weren't that good. I think we can get them. But the thing is, Sharks have a big pack and and didn't didn't allow them to get a roll on. Bulldogs don't have a big pack and they've got you know a very small guy in the middle there that can get targeted. So nothing changes for me there a whole heap. But it, it was absolutely clinical. And I'll tell you what. So Bulldogs, they've got to somehow. So I'm talking about the negatives for Bulldogs. I'll stay on the Bulldogs for a minute. Just another thing I think really hampers the Bulldogs is when the game, when there's no penalties, when there's no stop start, when there's no, when the game flows, like that finals footy flow, it doesn't really help them a whole heap because because they're so they're quite a small team. Their line line speed's so great, all this sort of stuff, like all the effort stuff, great. But if it doesn't stop, you don't get a break. You're gassed, like you're you're gone. You're run out of petrol. And they ran out of it really quick. Uh, so they need to find a way to somehow stop start the 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 game, whether it is like that's up this is up to Sexton. Kick the ball out. You know, like give give your team a rest. Like I know you love the kick chase is great, all this sort of stuff, but they've got to work on that because they've they want God, this is terrible. The Bulldogs won three games against top eight teams this year. It, it's not that's terrible. I'm going to go through and have a look, but I'm assuming they played a lot of teams outside of the top eight, and they won pretty much all of them, but that, that's a horrible record. So that sort of shows you when there are big games, when it is that sort of finals intensity, that they, they're not there yet. So they've got to be better and work on that. Uh, but yeah, three three games. Uh, so one of the bros said in the comments, yeah, they all came at the start of the year. No, they didn't. There was, they, they were, there was one at the start, one in the middle, and one not long ago. Three through for the whole year so um not great for the doggies uh they're going to be better um they really do get exposed there um burton coming back's huge uh but like i said kurt mann was a big one big out for me guys and uh it's 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 going to be hard without him 
Bronson sharing that comeback, but I don't. That doesn't help them a whole heap. It, it really doesn't. It uh, it's good, but like it's better than not having them. But it it, it doesn't really fix that uh, that middle. The middle they got absolutely creamed to the middle. Let's have a little look of the uh, team stats here. Look at that, guys. Meters run nearly two kilometers. Meters run doggies, thirteen barely thirteen. Massive. Absolutely massive discrepancy there. Post contact. Look at that. Nearly 200 extra meters. It's massive. Yeah. It's um. So that's got to get tidied up. They're going to melt. Manly are big and quick. So yeah, a lot to work on there. Now on to the Cowboys. Best I've seen them play since JT was playing. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, they made a grand finals. <laughs> you know, they made semifinals. This to me, like, so when Cows... All right, so this is a bit of a Penrith win, right? So this this is... Cowboys in the last three years, they've been brilliant at times. They've been poor at times. But Cowboys, when they... when they So 44 to 6, right? Let, let's look at that scoreline. Cowboys, when they normally win with scorelines like this, right... They've scored 18 points in the first eight minutes. And then something goes away, and then the other team scores, and then they finally wrestle back some momentum, I don't know, middle of the second half, and put on another three or four tries in, in 10 minutes. And they're pretty poor for, like, half the game. This was... There was no tries for the first 20 minutes? 18 minutes was their first try. This this is a this is how Penrith put on big scores. Like When you see Penrith... Score 40 and the other team scores 6 or nil or whatever. The tries don't all come in like 10-minute patches. They go, they grind you down, figure you out, see what's working, see what's not, see where the space is. They're almost like downloading what the other team's doing. They'll just break you down, keep the field in play, blah, 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 do their thing, go, go, go. And then they, and then they, the space opens up. Then they go to work, and then they'll score a try. And then six or seven, eight minutes later, they score another one. Then another eight or nine minutes, another one. And if you just keep keep scoring tries every six or seven minutes, all of a sudden you look at the end and you go, "Oh, it's forty nil," you know. And that, that, that this was like, look at these tries: like eighteenth minute, twenty eighth minute, thirty ninth minute, fifty fifth, fifty nine, but then sixty nine, and then like they're pretty spaced out. Like this is so much better from the Cowboys. I was so impressed with them. Best best performance. Very. That, this is like twenty twenty two Penrith Panthers victory for me against a very very good defensive team. Shout out to the Cowboys. They're going to be hard to stop. If they play like that through the finals, they they're going to be hard to stop. Like for example, if they play like that, right? They let's say they beat the Knights and then they play like this against the Roosters. I think they beat one of those top four teams that will come back down and have to play them. They looked absolutely incredible. So, sh shout out to the Cowboys. I knew they had this in them. I really did. It was just. Like like I said, it was I, I didn't actually know when when these tries were scored. I just you know that's what I just did that from memory and you know what I mean. Like they, just how nicely spaced out the tries are. To Cowboys normally score three tries in ten minutes. They won't score one for half an hour, and then they'll score another two or three in another eight minutes or something. This is better. And Val Holmes with the boot is a absolute sniper, absolute sniper. Shout out to the Cowboys. Panthers versus the Titans. Panthers weren't very good. Uh, <laughs> I liked the jerseys. I like the chalky milk jerseys. They need Cleary back ASAP. Like their their defense is good. Look, let, let's talk positives first. Like Titans can score points and they only score twelve. That's good. That's really really good. And this try here, I think, would have got scored on any one in the history of rugby league. That Jaden Campbell footwork was nice. Edwards looks a little off to me. Uh, I don't know. Apparently, he's got a bit of an injury there. They just they just need Cleary back. Like they're they're not that team anymore. That's so deep that it doesn't matter whether Cleary's out. They're still they're still good enough to win games, but they're not looking overly convincing because they they just need that structure. If you watch Cleary, like he just gets you. He does he does the complete opposite of what Ben Hunt's been doing this year. He just the way he gets you around the park, it's so direct, so precise, and so deliberate. Whereas Luai is complete opposite. And Jack Cogger is just... I mean, sorry, Brad Schneider is just not him. You know, like, he's just not him. So, Luai, awesome player, but he's not... All that stuff I just said, deliberate, purposeful, you know, like... You know, accurate, like, all that sort of... Like, Luai isn't all that stuff. He's... 
he's free wheeled in. He's, you know, he's all over the place, but it's an awesome all over the place. Panthers need that structure. They need they need him back ASAP. They really do. Um, yeah, they're, like they're, like I said, clear he's going to have to be back for the Roosters. I, I th- honestly think if Roosters get all their players back, I mean it is at Blue Bet Stadium. I, they they could they could beat Penrith. I think I think the Roosters beat that Penrith team. I really do. So they need they need Cleary back. He's the best player in the world. He's clutch. And just I just if there's 18 minutes to go, let's say Penrith are up, like Penrith are up 22 to 18, but but Nathan Cleary has the ball in the hand. I know them. I know he's going to make the right decision, or vice versa. Point um, doesn't panic in situations. You know. 11 minutes to go, kick into a corner. You know, that, that takes plums. Everyone normally goes for the Hail Mary there, stuff like that. So they need Cleary back if they want to do any damage, guys. And it, it's that is going to be such a good finals game. Panthers versus Roosters, absolutely bring it on. Sharks versus the Seagulls. This was a absolute... Cr- I enjoyed this so hard. This was high intensity to high quality teams banging it out like this was the speed of the carries the speed of the line this the tackles like i was sitting there going oh man the hell is going on so just the way this game went right so both teams were slapping at first at the start i actually thought manly was slapping a little harder like that some of the shots in this game were massive not hits just Bang, stopping them in their tracks. And then poof. I actually felt like Manly was slightly better through the middle. But I, I was like, man, it's one like one of these teams is going to, the fatigue is going to go. And I thought, I personally thought it was going to be the Sharks. Sharks slapped for 80. They just slapped for 80. And Seagulls didn't. Uh, I, I thought they were actually pretty good. And it was just, they got beaten by a really good Sharks team. A lot of people bagging the Sharks. I haven't been. I think the Sharks have been really good. I mean, they've won what? Played 24, 116. Like, that is damn good. Like, that is damn good. Like, they lost three more games in the Melbourne Storm who everyone's jacking off, you know? Like, they've been damn good. And they've put some scores on teams as well. So, like, I, I really like them. They've beaten Melbourne in Melbourne. It's going to be absolutely massive. I cannot wait for it. And I, I think they do have advantages across the park over Melbourne. It's just like, can they utilise them? Are they going to step up? Is Nico Hines going to show up in these big moments like he sort of hasn't in the past? But look, I loved I loved what they did. I loved um, I loved how Trindle sort of took the reins but like, and it allowed Nico Hines just to inject himself when he wanted. Uh, it was just really solid. Uh, it was really, really solid. I, I didn't understand why... Oregon Kafusi wasn't there. I was like, "What the hell?" But like that first carry, like Royce, I was, I thought, man, after that first carry, I was like, "Man, they're getting this." They folded Royce Hunt, Paseca, and Matt Lodge. Matt Lodge was so good in his first stint, and uh, yeah, Bulldogs are gonna have to go up against that. That is tough. Like Paseca and Lodge absolutely skittled them, and like I said, I felt like they were sort of on top through the middle. Not necessarily through play, just through the middle. I thought the the Manly team is big and fast, and uh, but you know Sharks just I wouldn't say weathered the storm because that's like sort of implies that they were getting pumped. They weren't getting pumped, but like they just matched them or slightly below what what the Sharks were putting up. But then the Sharks did it for eighty and they slapped Nakora and Teague Wilton. Wow, absolutely wow, absolutely incredible. Uh, but yeah, maybe I, I like the Sea Eagles still. Look, the game got away from. Them. I thought they went so. Just, just my personal opinion. I could be wrong here, and this is Captain Hindsight. Who knows? I feel like um, when the game got a little away from them, they sort of probably about here is, but yeah, about the forty-eight minute mark. That try just before the half sort of hurt. But, you know, just early in the first, I felt like Manly sort of started playing outside their systems a little bit because they were a bit behind. I, I just feel like if Turbo and Saab were there, I felt like maybe... Like, Turbo's good for a try in the first half. So Saab. 
I just feel like the game would have been a little closer and then maybe Manly didn't try and start playing outside the systems as much. Sharks maybe not as confident. I think they could have got them. But like I said, I'm not going to take anything away from the Sharkies. They were absolutely enormous. And like I said, I, I'm not right. Like I, I'm tipping Melbourne to beat them. But guys, this is this Sharks team's legit. Now onto the Seagulls. They've just look. I think they can just throw this one in the trash. I thought they were very good in patches. I just thought the game got away from them. Like I said, and they started playing outside the systems. I think when Turbo comes back, world of confidence. I think, and they've just got the confidence of slapping up the Bulldogs a week ago, like literally seven days ago. Uh, so I think they can come in and get it done. I think they'll be just fine, but they need Turbo there. They need him fit. They need him healthy. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Uh, Ruben Garrick decided to have a Ruben Garrick game in this. He was absolutely selling us on this one. He was awful. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be nuts, man. Oh, let's let's have a little look at the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Oh, I guess they're all... Bulldogs probably would have... Oh, I don't know. It's just hard. It's just hard with that pack. Someone someone wrote in our Discord chat, like, hopefully, finally, Serraldo will... I'm sorry, I'm talking about the Bulldogs again. Will... Well, I'm talking about Manly, I guess, but we'll realise they need some big forwards... I, th- I think you've realised that. I think I think they want some big forwards, but they just don't want big forwards and overpay for them. And also, I also don't think there's been a few that have just turned down contracts. I I know they didn't formally go out, but they were trying to get Royce Hunt. He went to the Tigers, and they tried to get Stefano Wicamano. I think they want some big forwards. I just don't think they've ended up getting one they want, um, or the ones they have wanted have gone somewhere else. So uh, Royce Hunt would have been awesome for them. Really would have. But look. Seagulls, I think they'll be just fine. Like I said, they, this this was always I said from I had Seagulls to finish in the top eight, but I said they were my smoky for top four, so pretty close. It was always with an asterisk of Turbo being fit. So if Manly want to do anything in these finals, Turbo has to be fit. I know I'm not breaking any crazy hot news right now. Pretty sure we all know that, but yeah, he he's got to be there. I think they'll be a different team with it with him there and. I absolutely cannot wait for that game. Belmore is... Oh, not Belmore. Our core is going to be pumping. Titans, Dolphins. Look. What defense from the Knights. This is one... I got this punt wrong, right? I had over 40 points and both teams to score over. I think it was 19 and 14 or whatever. This is one of these ones where I knew it was going under. So I knew. But all the numbers... So this is the thing. All the numbers on the punt said this was going over. It's like... The way they've been sc- scoring, defending, all this sort of stuff. Like, every you wrapped it all up, all their points have been scoring. And you sit there and go, this is going overs. And, but then my head is going, no, this is going unders. But you can't bet with both. You can't bet with your gut and your head at the same time. You have to uh, you have to pick one and stick. Because if you... It's like, one of the, it's like when you're betting roulette and you go, I'm going to pick red. You know, you're picking red and then you're like, red hits a few times or whatever. Not say, say you're not picking red. Let's just say it's going, you know, and red's been going red, 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 red. And you go, the black has to come, you know, like probably, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's, it's, uh, that didn't make sense. <laughs> like sometimes what you, you just have, you can't, you can't play with both is what I'm trying to say. Like you either stick with the numbers and you, you just be wrong sometimes. And you're like, I knew that was going to happen. You just be wrong sometimes, which is just what happens on the punt because you just hate it when you go, I hate it more personally when all the numbers say this is going to be overs. And then you go, nah, I think because of this and this, it's going unders. And then it's overs. You're like, I'm an idiot, you know? So, um, yeah, hopefully that made more sense in my terrible roulette analogy that I got completely wrong. <laughs> but you get what I, hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. But look, Knights' defense in this was real. I was really impressed, really, really impressed. It was intense. It was fast. The, 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 I wonder what the missed tackle rate was, but it didn't look like they missed many tackles. But even if they did, they scrambled so good. Oh shit, forty three. Okay, they scrambled so good and covered them. Like there, there is strike in this team. Like there must have been some line breaks here. Only two line breaks a piece. So yeah, a lot of scramble defense. It was just 
incredible. It was just, it was just damn incredible. I, I was so impressed. Like, like there was like full love was just nearly breaking. Like, well, you got guys like Herbie and Hammer. So like it, they had so much strike, and the Knights just kept turning them away. Like I, I look at some of the Knights games this year, and I'm just like, they leak thirty four, and I'm just sitting there going, what the hell, like. What the hell was that? Against like not good teams and stuff. It's it was absolutely incredible. They were really, really good. I before this game, I would have gone, all right, let's say Knights just happened to beat the the Dolphins. I would not have given them a shot against whoever finished fifth. I am now. I am now. Seriously. It's um they they were really nice. And one one big thing I think that's really helped the Newcastle Knights, see what happens when you don't change your halves combination every two weeks? You finally stick with something. Let it go. And look, Crossland and Cogger have been great. Cog- Cogger was incredible in this game. Phoenix, like, didn't really stand out, but just he did what he needed to do. It was... It, it's all about combinations. It's all about gelling. It's all about knowing where someone's going to be because you play with them every week. It's, it's great. And it's just... This is the longest since these two became the halves of this team. This, this is the longest, you know combination they've had going and it's their longest win streak who would have thought who would have thought changing your heart your halves combination every other week wasn't a good idea so um <laughs> o'brien might have uh, saved his job again right at the end of the year <laughs> adam o'brien there because yeah it's uh pretty damn crazy now on just on to the dolphins guys so damn close like they they, they tried their rings out here they really really tried I'm really hoping <coughs> they have a good season next year under, uh, what's his name? Knight? No. can't remember his bloody, uh, can't remember his bloody name. The new coach coming in. Apparently he's a gun coach. I really hope they, he thrives and does well there. They're doing good things. Uh, they're just a few cattle short in the middle. Uh, and yeah, like, obviously there's a few off-field things that never made the news. That is why there's a couple Fords not in there. Uh, um, which should be there. I don't know how that didn't make the news. Brisbane are good at covering up things like that. Uh, Tevita Pangai Jr., uh, like he was just, he was blowing hands on hips, hands on knees, hands on head three minutes into this game. Absolutely blowing. Uh, but yeah, look, I don't think Dolphins were that bad. They tried their rings off. Knights just were there. There was a couple, of, like, there was an unlucky call with Fuller at the start of the, the obstruction call. Could have been a different story there. I thought it was the wrong call, but look, that's footy. Sometimes they go your way, sometimes they don't. It just sucks when it possibly costs you a final spot. But look, they they still got a lot of strike here. They still got a lot of talent. You know, I think they can go well next year. So shout out to the Dolphins and the Knights. Look, they got the Knights will come up here, so they've got the Cowboys in town. So that is going to be a cracker. Cowboys were patient and clinical. That's going to be such a good game. Such a good game. But yeah, it's a... Uh, oof. Absolutely cannot wait, boys. Finals are on. Oh, yeah. All right, that's it. We're done. We're finished, everyone. I wanted to whip through this one. Now, I'm going to do a bit more in an in-depth version of the, of the finals games. Um, so, like I said, let me know in the comments. Four separate games, videos, or do you want them all in one? Um... If you haven't already, guys, shoot us a sub. Um, if I've won your punt this year, if, you've, if I've helped you at all, if you've enjoyed the content at all, it uh, really means a lot, guys. Trying to hit 8K by the end of the year. I think we're at 7.5, so we're getting close. And um, thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.